Go Fletch. Why don't you uh, show us what you can do? Do some work for us. Sounds good. We'll start with this 80 pound polygon case. How about that? Sounds good to me. What does that feel like when it's lifting 80 pounds? Uh, so it's about 8 pounds in each hand, so a lot less than 80 pounds. And as you can tell, I'm speaking pretty clearly, so <laughs> definitely not straining myself at all. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very light. Um, yeah, it's mag it magnifies my strength quite a bit. That's all right. Um, and Sam, or I'm Fletcher, uh, tell us about where we're headed. So what's the, we talk about gains and robots and strength enhancement. Can you talk about what we're doing and where we're headed? Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, the, the, this robot operates using a get-out-of-the-way control, which is basically um, enhancing Fletcher's own strength. Anything he does to the robot, the robot listens to and amplifies, in this case, by a factor of four. So anything that he does to his right hand is amplified by a factor of four. Anything on his left, amplified by a factor of four. Anything on his back or on his feet, factor of four amplification. And that's why you can lift something 80 pounds and only feel about seven, eight pounds in each hand uh, and very little weight on his back as well. Which means that he can lift things that normally a person wouldn't be able to lift ergonomically and not strain his body. And constantly listening to how much force we're putting on his body from the robot and trying to get out of his way. Yep. Sam, when they go to the arms, what will they feel over there? That's right. So similarly on the arms, you will feel a uh, four times amplification as well. And you'll also be compensating for the weight that you're lifting up. So you'll feel basically nothing. Uh, very, very little weight, maybe one or two pounds. And then ultimately where we're headed is about 20 pounds. That's right. That's right. So uh, this is the world's first prototype. We're always improving. Uh, and we're, we're aiming for that 20 times amplification so that you can lift anything and it'll feel like two to five pounds. Um, speaking of which, uh, our end effects are something we're really proud of. The whole mechanical design is very impressive. But we can do this entire logistics task with these simple end effectors. You can see he's got some rubber pads on the side. Uh, those are able to give him some more friction. And then he's got the hooks that can manipulate just about anything that we use uh, as humans. Uh, Plus, why don't you go ahead and lift that 30 pound box? Yeah. So if you've ever tried to lift a box with just the palms of your hands, you can't lift a very heavy box doing that because you can't apply enough force to overcome friction. But because Fletch is four times stronger than he normally is, he can apply that force with ease. What are you feeling on your hands right now, Fletch? Uh, really just a couple of pounds pressing in and upwards. Right. So it, it doesn't take very much to hold that box in place. So if you can imagine, he can do that all day long. In fact, how long have you done this exact group of tasks, Fletch? Uh, I, I've done it for five hours without stopping one time. So yeah, I, I take everything off and then put it all back on take it off, put it back on for five hours. It's actually easier for him to tear it down and set it back up than for us to help him because yeah. it, it weighs so much for us versus what it feels like to him. Yeah. And I wasn't sore at all, like any at any point or afterwards. No. That's right. Yeah. The robot's doing the real heavy lifting here. Uh, go ahead and speaking of heavy lifting, I uh, thought you were going to look at 110 pound ammo crate here for us. Okay. So another thing we can do is we can lock the arms of the robot, even while holding heavy weights, and go hands-free. So Fletch has four arms right now. He's got all of the dexterity of his human self, and he's got the added strength of the exoskeleton, and while you're just sitting there with 110 pounds in your, in your dog hands, uh, what do you feel on your back? What are you feeling on your legs? Um, my legs don't feel anything. My back, uh, it's pushing the, you know, a couple pounds of force. Um, but really not, not very much at all. So it's loading the exoskeleton, but not the person, and that's the whole point. Yeah. Right now, with these arms locked, we're also saving energy. Uh, you might think of uh, uh, the structure itself is supporting all of that weight, but the motors are not. And so uh, that means we're getting energy savings as well. And then you can go right back to work after he does his, uh, his tasks, and he's good to go. Yeah. Here's one that uh, I wish I had in my garage. He's going to lift this uh, 84 pound tire down. The, oh yeah, the water jugs, absolutely. Yeah. This one is an interesting task as well. These are 50 pound water jugs, one in each hand. So uh, this would be a, a two person lift here at Sargos. Uh, and water jugs, as you know, uh, slosh around and he's able to control that movement just as if he were carrying them normally, except he feels less weight and so it's easier for him to control. But he's maintained his dexterity, any ability he has as a person, we have allowed him to maintain, and we've only made him stronger. We're trying to only add to his humanity uh, and make
make things stronger. Yep. And in a similar note to that, we're going to lift this 84 uh, pound tire now. You can see there's bolts on the main shaft here, so he has to both line up those bolts and uh, lift that 84 pounds. So that's that's a two person lift right there, done with one person and an exoskeleton. And as you can see, he just lines it up and he's good to go. And then going back to that idea of him having four arms, he can now lock the, the arms out of his way and he can do something very nimble and dexterous. Uh, so he doesn't lose any of his capabilities as a person. Nice work. So we talked a lot about those end effectors. We're really happy with those simple end effectors that take no power. But there are some tasks that uh, require a different shape. So one such task would be this, uh, this missile lift. And you can come around to this corner here and get a better view. Um, so these hooks are all about um, sort of form closure. So as, uh, or force closure. So as people, when we carry a box, we use the geometry of our hands and our body to make sure that the box can't go anywhere. And uh, in general, that's what this exoskeleton has been doing. Um, one thing to note here, guys, we swap out end effectors. This is the very first prototype. In the next couple of months, we're gonna have quick swapping end effectors that you can change out, just like the bits on your drill or one of your kitchen appliances. It'll be a five second maximum swap out. So you might imagine somebody having a tool belt of three or four different end effectors and they very rapidly can lock out the arms, put on the new end effectors and get right back to work. Um, this is just our uh, prototype way to do it right now. Both lift and maneuver the missile uh, very easily. So right now Punchy's going to go into a, uh, a mode where he's uh, we're reducing those forces even more on his back and um, He's going to uh, do that from the phone. He's completely in his own control here. And so he's just going to uh, grab onto this thing, get some of that form and force closure we talked about, and he's going to line up those rails and slide it in. That is one person doing a three-person task, and that's what the exoskeleton can unlock in many different industries that we're really excited about.